Now, on Monday, as I'm sure you know, we launched March for Your Mind. We're looking at how walking, just a simple walk, can help your mental health. Well, yesterday, the Duchess of Cambridge's brother, James Middleton, spoke about his depression and how his dogs have helped him to overcome that. And today, having just completed her sport relief trek through Namibia, Frankie Bridge joins me with her new book, Open, Why Asking for Help, can save your life. Congratulations Thank you. on this. It's really good. It's really honest as well. And I love this, why asking for help can save your life, because that's kind of what happened to you. Yeah. You know, you had to get help, and it's a hard thing to do, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's the hardest thing with any sort of mental health problem, yeah. is you kind of, first of all, you think no-one's going to understand. Uh, you feel completely alone, and you feel helpless, and that's kind of why I wrote the book. I just wanted to say, I haven't got all the answers, but... But this is what happened to me. Yeah, here's yeah. what happened to me, so you don't feel alone, and that you feel a little bit of hope. See, I think it really helps, especially when people like yourself talk about it, because there we are, we look on the outside and we see... You're with the Saturdays. You know, you're a young girl, you're 23 years old at the time. You've got the world as your oyster, yeah. you know? And actually, inside, you were dying. Yeah. You were having the worst time. Yeah, it's hard. This video here is the last bit of work I did just before I went into hospital. Um, and luckily for me, I always say it wasn't a upbeat, smiley, dancey sure, video. That would so be real hard. I could have, yeah, I could. Have, I got away with it a lot easier. Mm. But when I look at that video, it does make me feel sad because I just think I've just there was nothing really behind the You knew the what eyes. was going on. Yeah, I was yeah. just a bit lost. So after that, you did get help, didn't you? You yeah. went into hospital and got help. And you've always had, which is fantastic, great support from mm -hmm. your family, especially Wayne, especially your husband. Yeah, yeah, Wayne's been amazing. Um, we'd only been together a year when right. I went into hospital. So it's quite early on in a relationship. He could have very easily have left if he wanted to. But actually, he's the whole reason... I ended up in hospital. He he's the person that rang my GP in the first place and just said he just she, knew she needs more help. Yeah, yeah. more than he um, could, more than even he. Yeah, could do. and yeah, it just was it was actually quite a relief going into hospital because I kind of felt like I just handed myself over and I was no longer my own responsibility. No, I get nice. that. I get yeah. that. Com I, I get that completely. No, it's really interesting because you've just done this really gruelling trek in yeah. Namibia. You were all supposed to go to Mongolia, but because of coronavirus and travel problems, <laughs> yep. you then had to go from... And you all trained for the, the cold. Yep. So you went from there to Namibia. Yeah. Where it's, I know it's cold at night, but it's boiling during the day. Yeah, so it ended up it even being hotter than they thought it was going to be. Oh, so it ended up being about 45 degrees oh, in the day. Oh, gruelling. Um, yeah. gruelling. And, it was, and it was the tallest sand dunes in the world. So we went from minus 35 flat yeah, to... Awesome you know, uphill, downhill Jeez. in 45 degrees. But you had a wee wobble, didn't you? You had a I bit did. of a wobble over there. Yeah, I had, um, I had my first panic attack that oh. um, I think the last one I had was about five years ago. Right. Um, great, it was on camera, you know, typical. But also, I suppose part of me feels like it is the whole charity is focusing on mental health. Mm -hmm. um, and what better to explain it, I suppose, than someone seeing it. It's sure. not what I would have planned. No, I'm um, sure, but, but it's, it's honest and yeah. it's authentic. What, what do you think brought that on, Frankie? Do you know? I think just the fear. Oh, you know, okay. you're having to hand yourself over to other people and trust other people mm -hmm. that you don't particularly know. Sure. And you're in an environment that you don't know. So for me, the middle of the desert is a really scary place. Of it's course. so vast. Yeah. It was so hot. And um, at one point, I was on my own for quite a long time. Uh, and I think that's where I got into my own head. Like, nothing's alive there other than beetles. Mm. And I got to the point where I felt like the beetles were kind of laughing at me as they were running past because they were so fast yeah. and I was so slow. And it was just all a bit overwhelming. <laughs> Yeah, really? it was just too yeah. much, and um, I was fine. The last three days, I was fine, but Good. I think just that first day, I just yeah. thought, what am I doing? Sure, no, it's, it's a big, big yeah. experience. I was I gutted I had a panic attack, but, you know. That's life. Yeah. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. You go over it. You're yeah. fine. Here you are. You're, you're OK. You um, you really bonded with Nick Grimshaw. I did. And, and he was on talking about it. And then he he got actually pretty ill with heat exhaustion, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, bless him. He so suffered. Th yeah, that was on the first day. And it, he was doing so well. I know. We were worried he wasn't going to be able to, to do the whole thing. But I know. I think he was as well. We were mm. tent mates. Um, and we ended up becoming a bit like a married couple. It was quite funny. <laughs> He's just so... As, as much as I cried, I laughed even more on the whole trip. 
Yeah. Um, and he's just, yeah, he's such a good person to be around. And the team just was amazing. You know, you've done it before. Yeah, you don't and have a friendship like that with you don't, anyone else. It's really interesting. And you're absolutely right about the fact that sometimes so, you know, there'd always be a day when one of us wouldn't be quite right. Yeah. And we'd all help that person. Then the next day it would be somebody else. Yeah. Just that that's the way the dynamics. Exactly. And the camaraderie was quite extraordinary. It, it that's really what was. makes it special. And that's why I do things like this, obviously, to push myself and to raise awareness, but also to make those friendships of and course. be in, with a yeah. group of people and no, you know, no one else sense. will know what it was like other than us. No, so, for sure. Nice. Talking about the book, um, mm -hmm. Open, how hard was it for you writing this to go back to those times where you weren't so good? Was that difficult? Um, it was more difficult than I thought. Mm, I think because I've imagine. spoken about my mental health for so many years, I was like, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, but actually doing lots of interviews, going over it a, a lot yeah. um, and seeing my doctor's notes actually was quite difficult because there were things that I'd forgotten um. and things that I weren't really aware of. Um, so that was, that was what I found hard. And also just the pressure of getting something of in on a deadline no, and absolutely. something that no. hopefully people like. <laughs> do you talk to your kids about mental health? Because they're, they're, they're still very young. But, yeah. But do you, do you talk to them? Not, not maybe about, we're now going to sit down and talk about mental health. I don't no. mean that. But just generally, if the subject comes up. Um, yeah, so they're only four and six. So yeah. I try to... If I'm ever feeling unwell, they just think mummy's unwell. That's sure. all they get told. Um, but with them, every night I have a discussion with them when I put them to bed of how they're feeling that day. So last night it was, so what made you happy today oh, and what made you really sad good today? Idea. And they love it. And yeah. if I forget, they're like, mummy, we haven't spoken about our day. Right. So they remind me. Really and then they idea. ask me as well, which is really cute. Um, so it's quite Aww. a nice moment. Um, and also I think they do benefit from it. As I say, they always ask for it. Well, so. the thing is, that's where you can learn what they're loving about life, but also maybe the things that are bothering them exactly. and, and get to that really fast. That's a brilliant, brilliant idea. Thanks. I love that. <laughs> Frankie, it's been great to talk to you. Open Why Asking for Help can save your life and it really, really can. It's out now. And for more information on mental health do do visit our website there's lots of info there too thank you so much thank for you coming in. thanks for having me great <laughs> to see you